veggie friendly beef. So yeah, you heard that right, veggie friendly beef. So I'm sure a lot of you are re were reading the caption and were thinking like, oh, what's going on here fam? Like, where's the logic? But that's not even going to be the most important benefit of what I'm going to be talking about today. And at the end of this video, you all should be more informed about the potential food biotech has to completely disrupt the agricultural industry. And so for those of you watching for the first time, my name's Spencer and this is Biotech Basics. Well, what if we only needed just one cell sample from just one cow to make 80,000 quarter pounders of beef? And crucially, without having to slaughter any animal so before I get on to that, I did a little poll on my Instagram at Biotech Basics where I asked, if you're a vegetarian, would you consider eating meat if the animal was not slaughtered to be on your plate? And thanks to everyone that replied to it. So I got quite a few viewers who said yes, some said no, and some people assumed that am I trying to go vegetarian and asking for advice? And a lot of other people were just confused about the whole concept in general. But this is where biotech steps in. So back in 2013, Professor Mark Post unveiled the world's first ever slaughter-free beef burger. And so this took years of research at Maastricht University in the Netherlands. And the total cost of this burger was a crazy 250,000 euros to make. And so this was funded by Sergey Brin, a co-founder of Google. And as you might remember from my first video, this is just another example of big tech companies and their co-founders being fascinated by biotech. What they did to make this beef burger was to take cell samples from a living cow and grow these in a laboratory to get their beef. And actually, this idea is not even that new. Winston Churchill wrote a book in the 1930s where he predicted that in 50 years time, we would not need to grow a chicken on a farm but we could just grow the parts that we want to eat separately. And so we're quite a few decades late on this prediction, but we now have three key skills that enable us to do this. And so this includes the ability to isolate and identify stem cells, grow cell and tissue cultures, and lastly, the more recent advances in tissue engineering techniques. So yeah, so I've actually read a few research papers on this topic, so you guys don't have to. And so if you guys definitely are looking for me to produce another video where I kind of summarize these processes and how tissue engineering and tissue culture processes work, then I can definitely ready, I'm definitely ready to do that for you all. So yeah, and we got these cells by taking a small biopsy of muscle tissue from the cow in a harmless procedure. And once the sample is taken, it is grown in a laboratory where just one cell sample can lead to 80,000 quarter pounders of beef being made. So after the success in 2013, Mark Post founded a startup, Mosa Meat, which has now gone on to raise 6.7 million pounds earlier this year. And so with a number of scientific breakthroughs along the way, they've been able to heavily scale up their processes of growing the meat and are rumored to have their beef priced as cheaply as 10 pounds a burger. And so as they expect, as they announced that they expect their product to be available in the markets by 2021, there's still more time for the cost to go down even further. However, this slaughter-free ethical aspect of this meat is not even the most important benefit it has. And so I briefly mentioned this topic in my first video and basically research published back in 2011 by Oxford University and the University of Amsterdam showed that meat grown in a laboratory could be produced with 96% less greenhouse gases, with 45% less energy use, 99% less land use, and lastly, 96% less use of water when compared to the conventional methods of producing meat. There's even more benefits than just these. And so you get to avoid all the diseases that comes from an animal being on a farm and you don't need to just drug them up with loads of antibiotics and hope for the best. And by the way, antibiotic resistance is a major world problem fueled heavily by its use in farms. And I hope my lecturers can see I've been paying attention because they've been giving me lectures on this all week. But more importantly, 
There's even been some reports that go way back to 2013 suggesting that antibiotic resistant superbugs will actually be able to kill us before the knockoff effects of climate change will reach us. So this shows that these alternative ways of producing meat are absolutely critical in building a more sustainable future. And so some people I've spoken to have said, isn't the best thing for everyone to just stop eating meat? But the only issue with that is that it's not a realistic ambition to have for the future. And so me personally, I don't think I'm going to be giving up meat anytime soon. And there's many other people out there that will not give up meat. And then when you compound this with the fact that we have a growing population, there's going to be even more meat eaters in the future. And so it make more sense to invest our resources in growing more environmentally friendly, clean meat to feed these billions of people in the world. So one last thing I'll mention, which will matter the most, is the price. And so at £10 a burger, it's still a little bit pricey. And so my favourite restaurant to go to to have burgers is GBK and usually they're charging me anything between 8 and £12 but I tend to pay a little bit cheaper because I've got to use a student discount of course but realistically we're leaving no profit for these casual restaurants and then also with most of the population growth you see happening in countries with a lower net income than the UK it's even more important that we make sure that this lab-grown meat is accessible and financially viable for these people. But as we hope, cap the laws of capitalism will hopefully drive down the cost of these burgers with many other companies finding new ways to innovate and make it at a cheaper price. On that note, Mosa Meats is not the only player in this field. There are many other startups exploring the potential of cultured meat, but I only have time to mention two of them. So Just, a company that made its name for making plant-based food alternatives, announced last year in June that they plan to have their lab-grown meat available in restaurants at the end of this year. And yes, I know, there's really less than two months left in this year, so we could all be tasting this pretty soon. And so they were founded back in 2011 and have funding that is close to a quarter of a billion dollars. And a lot of investors are attracted to them and they have been making chicken nuggets and also exploring different types of meat. Also, any pescatarians out there, don't worry, we've got something for you guys. And so Finless Foods, founded literally just last year, have been using tissue engineering techniques to produce lab-grown fish. And so they've not set a public time frame for when they expect it to be reaching the market, but with $3.5 million raised in the fundraising rounds back in June, they definitely have the funds to bring it to the market in a few years time. And so they've had the support of IndieBio, a venture capital firm that helps accelerate startups using biology to tackle problems the world faces. Just to conclude this video, I would like to find out if you'd be interested in me explaining the scientific challenges these companies face when it comes to culturing their cells and growing them in the laboratory and so i've read quite a few research papers on this topic so i am ready to make that video if you guys want it and more importantly i want to find out if you would consider eating lab grown meat and so feel free to comment below i'd love to hear all of your opinions on this and then lastly if you if you love this video don't forget to leave leave a like and also make sure to subscribe below and if, if there's anything you kind of didn't quite like or you thought I could improve, also let me know. I'd love to hear. I'd, I want to improve these videos. And so my name's Spencer and you just watched Biotech Basics.